Praise God. Good morning. Uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful day that the Lord has made. There, When the Lord makes them, they're always beautiful. It doesn't matter if there's, if it's 75 and sunny or minus 5 and a foot of snow. If the Lord made the day, it's beautiful. It's plain and simply, be it here on earth, be it in heaven, Wherever wherever it is that you get to enjoy the day the Lord made, it's a glorious thing. And sorry, I'm shaking a little bit. Uh, maybe that'll help. Again, give God all the glory for this day. Uh, once again, I I am uh, sitting down just by, you know, no, no attack of Satan or anything like that. It's just simply that the body's still a little sore. I'm fine, but I'm also uh, going to not torture myself by standing up for however long uh, God will be using me this morning. Uh, it's not a bad thing in any way, shape, or form. It just... You know, like I, like I was talking with with my sister who's on here now this morning. She, you know, God still speaks from His chair just as easy as He can speak from from standing up behind a pulpit or or wherever. I know many pastors that when they were uh, hurting for some reason or another, uh, you know, because Jesus said in this world we'll have tribulation. That includes us. That includes pastors. And I've seen many that on occasion would sit down. So I offer no apology except that, you know, it is what it is. God, God's still going to move this morning. And I encourage you to grab a seat and uh, prepare for to sit for a moment because... Uh, the word that uh, God told me to speak this morning uh, was one that I preached about. Well, when I looked looked the notes up or looked up, okay, it was nine years ago, and it happened to be a PowerPoint presentation. I don't do those anymore, and when I do, like this morning, I don't allow it to restrict the Holy Spirit. At one time, I had to get away from using PowerPoint because it was too restricting. And, uh, you know, when God wants to say something and it's not on my notes, then, you know, people get distracted and blah, blah, whatever. So I had to get away from it, basically, because it freed me. But specifically this morning, God told me to go back to this particular uh, word and... Quite honestly, as I was going back through it this morning, um, it has served as a reminder to me already, and I'm sure it will speak to me even more so as we get into it. And so, uh, if some of this may seem familiar this morning, then uh, just take it as a reminder and kind of ask yourself, have I gotten away from that? And so, Because sometimes we need... A refresher course, shall we say. And that's kind of what we'll have this morning. It, it, some of you may have heard this before. Others of you that I know watch have probably never heard this specific word from me before. So it will be brand new to you. Whatever the case is, I know there's more than one person out there because God would not have me waste time bringing it if it was not for someone. Okay. And prom I promise you, any word from God is for all of us. All right, praise God. So let, let's pray and we'll get right on into it. Not now, buddy. You need to... Sorry, I forgot to put the little monsters up and go lay down. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, Father, we thank you, God, for this day. It's an incredibly beautiful day. 
that we know you made and we know that you made it for us to enjoy, Father. So we give you all the praise, honor, and glory for that right now, Father. We pray, God, that um, you would open hearts, minds, and ears today to hear, receive, and understand what it is you want us to take away from this word today, Father. We pray, God, and claim every promise in your word, Father God. They are ours. We are to take them personal. You wrote them down there for us, Father. And so all we need to do is claim and believe, Father. May we walk in faith. Help our faith, Father God, as we move on with this day, Father. As we move into this word, help our faith, Father God. It's We need faith in you, Father God. And we can do nothing without you, Father so we just give it all over to you right now, Lord. Whatever it is, whatever trial, whatever blessing, Father God, uh, that has came our way or is coming our way, we give it all over to you. And we give you all thanks, Father God, because you know that you promised that you would t take us through. And we will always praise and honor you. From not only today, but every day. And in Jesus' precious name I pray, amen. All right, God bless you all. Praise God. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit today. Uh, and it's kind of a little bit more than about music. But in this PowerPoint presentation, it's kind of cute. Uh, I don't know if I, you all can see that or not. It says, music. It says, is mine okay? Okay. And we'll get to this, but I just, I just really need to mention it right now. This includes Christian music. Okay. Very specifically. Uh, this sermon or this word this morning is uh, specifically about a very specific, uh, old hymn that has stood the test of time. And uh, we'll get to that in a moment. But first of all, I just wanted to, you know, it says the title was Music, Is Mine Okay? And I just wanted to cover a couple of things really quick here. Uh, and I, I, don't get me wrong. I am not talking about Christian music in these next couple of statements. Okay, because someone asked me about Christian rap one time and Christian whatever, and it's like, hey, if it's leading someone to the Lord, I'm I'm good with it. And and in keeping with today's theme, if it is scriptural, and that's kind of the whole point of today, is even in the Christian music, is it scriptural? So when I say when I just talk about it and I mention rap music, I'm not at this particular moment talking about Christian rap because I am all for it. If it reaches the soul, all glory to God, okay? But just really quick, is your music okay? This is some of the rap titles. Now, understand as a Christian, your music should, should line up with Scripture, okay? Because... Satan was the minister of music in heaven, and one of the greatest weapons that he uses today to get into our mind is music. And so if you step outside of that and allow him to feed your mind with this, this evil music, then it will affect you, I promise you. Yeah, oh, I'm too strong for that. No, you're not. You know, some of the greatest, most respected ministers in the world have fallen. Maybe not necessarily because of music, but I can probably start in somewhere along the line. But anyway, let's let's move on here. Here's a few rap titles. Um, this, like I said, this was originally uh, penned in uh, 2013. So these, some of these titles may not be current, but quite frankly, uh, I believe they've gotten worse. Here's a couple titles. Body to Body. She Will. Uh, H blank 
Yeah, F blank right. You fill in the blanks. Point is, you know. Okay, those do not line up with Scripture. So, as a Christian, this type of music, I'm sorry, it is not okay. It just simply, it feeds the wrong part of your mind. I mean, in not to pick on, not to pick on rap. Let's look at some country titles really quick. Okay. Not all rap is bad. Not all country's bad. But I'm simply saying, you know, when you when you turn on that type of station, for instance. Okay, I'll put it like this, a little leaven leavens the whole loaf. And so you will hear these songs in that particular type of style of music station, okay? Country titles. All the guys that turn me on, turn me down. Uh, I looked and I couldn't find any scripture to match that one. Can't get over you, so why don't you get under me? I found a lot of scriptures about that one, but none of them supported the logic of that song. You know, frankly, I mean, I found a lot of scriptures about all those that I've mentioned so far and in refuting what those songs say or discouraging what those songs imply. Okay. So if that's the type of music you listen to, then to answer the question initially posed, is mine okay? The answer is no. You know, I love country music, country style music. I like country gospel. You know, some of my favorite singers are the Gaithers. And um, slightly more contemporary is um, those that sing with uh, the Swagger Ministry. And, and even in that, and we'll get to this, like I said, I know I'm probably going to mention it more than once, but we need to be careful about even about our Christian music. Now, um, uh oh, don't like the looks, okay. Uh, one, the song in particular I wanted to examine today as a good example is Amazing Grace. Now, um, it was actually published in 1779. So real quickly, doing the math, that's 243 years, I believe, that this song has survived. And that's quite an accomplishment because you look at a lot of the old hymns, you'll hear Amazing Grace many times in the course of, of of going to pretty much any church uh, in some form or another. There's been altered versions of it, etc., uh, which I, well, I'm not speaking about or to today, specifically about the original um, lyrics. Okay? And But there are many of the old hymns even back into the 19th century, less than 100 years old, okay, that you just don't hear anymore. Occasionally, yes, yeah, but but Amazing Grace, you got a pretty good chance of hearing that on any given Sunday in any given church because it has stood the test of time. And there's a reason for that. Let me just give you real quickly it was written by John Newton in the 18th century and was first published in 1779. Inspired by an experience on a slave trade ship, that's what John Newton was doing until the Lord got a hold of him. He was a slave trader. And, uh, but the Lord got a hold of him. It says, it was in a violent storm as he was trying to control the ship, he cried out, Lord, have mercy on us. And the Lord began to give him the scripture. Um, 
Like I said, the reason this song has stood the test of time is because every single verse, or, yeah, verse, in the original um, lyrics, every, okay, every single thing in this song matches Scripture. And I'm going to go through that today. So you understand and I hope you all see Chip's comment. I was going to get there with Tamara, okay? Tamara, and matter of fact, let's just back up for a second. Music does affect you. Tamara has a testimony very similar to the comment that uh, um, Chip just put up there. She was at a Christian concert one night. In service and went into work all fired up. She had to go to work afterwards, okay? Went in there all fired up for the Lord. Turned on her old old music, uh, which was not, it was worldly, secular music, okay? And someone had been trying to tell her, uh, you know, you need to change your music. He was telling her that in love. This was a... Uh, mentor of both Tamara and I's, and she kind of rejected and almost got upset with him at one point. But this particular night, she got to work, turned on her music, and after just a very few moments, her mood changed. She went from just high in the spirit to just miserable and depressed, just like that. Just a, uh, and I forget that she could tell you the song that came on that, that did it to her. So it does. In fact, I don't care what you say. It, it plays a part in your, your spiritual well-being. Okay. So l let's get back. Let's get back to Amazing Grace. And I'm just going to go through it verse by verse. It says, Amazing Grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And if I start singing, just turn me off. <laughs> Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Ephesians 2.4 But God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. By grace you are saved. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in its kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not from yourselves it is a gift of God. By grace you are saved. Amazing grace. You get the point. I promised I wouldn't sing. I told you to turn me off if I started doing that. Anyway, next we see, I once was lost. But now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. And I, it's funny, nine plus years ago, when I first did this sermon, the Lord made me sing it before I went to the pulpit. My grandson Jerry joined with me, and I could not do it. I would had the, the song itself playing, I forget who, what version I used, but it had the original lyrics before I went up, but I had to do it. But anyway, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Matthew ten six, but but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Uh, Matthew fifteen twenty four, but he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You were lost. I don't care who you are. 
for how deep you are in the Lord right now. You were lost. I once was lost. We were born into sin. So I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, you were lost. But now I'm found. Job 6.44 No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. He found you. Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 1, 4 through 9. And I'm encouraged to turn there. Second Peter. I gotta find the book first. Oh, wouldn't you know it? Second Peter one verse four. Second Peter chapter one. Verse 4, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine, divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see far off, and hath forgotten that he was granted from his old, he was purged from his old sins. Okay, but he that lacketh these things is blind. You were once blind. Okay, but now you see. Again, this every verse. Moving on, twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears relieved. Okay, As here we see that the grace of God has caused him to fear or to reverence God. And he learned to be respectful and reverential of God. Hebrews twelve twenty eight says, Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace, whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Okay? So it was grace that taught my heart to fear. It was grace that taught my heart to have reverence for God. And then it goes on, and grace my fears relieve. That's two different types of fears he's talking about here. Then, okay, Psalm 56, verse 4. In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. And I promise you, we have all feared what flesh could do to us, what other man could do. We're not to fear man. I mean, worst case scenario, as Paul said, if another man were to take your life today, where would you be? It would be gain for you. They can only take this flesh. They can't take that part of you that really matters. This flesh, this flesh is just a temporary housing. And so if man was to if another man was to cause you to stop breathing today, it's gain for you, as as Paul said. You're gonna be in the arms of the Lord. What better place could you possibly be? So why would you fear what man can do? And if there's anything else, God gonna take care of it, okay? So let's keep moving here. I know this and this is okay. How precious is how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed? Again, that's scriptural. You have to believe. 
You have to believe in your heart. Romans 10, 9 and 10 says that you confess your mouth and believe in your heart. So, again, this is scripture. Matter of fact, that's the scripture I hadn't even looked. That's the scripture that I had written down for this. Romans 10, 9. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So it starts with that belief in your heart. So, the writer here, uh, Mr. Newton, is saying, How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed? For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And then in that same chapter, Romans ten thirteen, For who shall ever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The How precious did that grace appear? The hour I first believed. So the moment you believe in your heart, this grace is available. This grace is there. Again, the song, Amazing Grace, is matching scripture right on through. As we move on, keep going. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, have I already come? Tis grace has brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. Romans 8.35 Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pearl, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that saved us. And, I, you know, along with that, uh, we understand that Jesus said in this world where we have tribulation. But what did he say right behind that? You've heard me say it many, many times. But be of good cheer. I have overcame the world. Uh, and we look at John 3, chapter 3, verses 15 and 16. That whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, or should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, I I question this sometimes, uh, specifically the word should and shall. Uh, in my mind, there's a difference. I believe that shall is more appropriately applied here. But that that said, again, this the Lyrics of the song, "'Tis grace that brought me safe this far, and grace will lead me home." It's plain and simple right here in the scriptures that we read. Grace. And it, then it goes on. The Lord have promised, has promised good to me. His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. So we look at, uh, I guess, it's James one seventeen, And I, I know you don't have time to flip to all these, so you can write them down, go back and listen, whatever. If you, if you want this PowerPoint presentation, I'll be happy to send it to you. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from, from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness neither shadow of turning. Psalm thirty three twenty, Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Psalm seventy three twenty six, My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Matching perfectly the lyrics to the song. When John Newton wrote this, he had been in some scripture. 
the Lord had gotten a hold of him. It's, if you want to really look up his story, see how the Lord changed him. Okay. Moving on with it, with the lyrics. Yes, when this flesh and heart shall fail and mortal, mortal life shall cease, I shall possess within the veil a life of joy and peace. Yeah, Psalms are supposed to rhyme, and this one does a, does a bit. In Revelation 21, 4, quickly, it's not revelations. There is no S on the end. God was given one revelation in the entire book of Revelation. Okay. But anyway, in 21, 4, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. It says a life of joy and peace. When, when we go home. We will have a life full of joy and peace. That's what the author said. That's what Newton said in his lyrics. And it matches exactly what the scripture says. There won't be man and cry, no sorrow, no pain, and no death in heaven. Immortal life. Okay? I shall possess within the veil a life of peace and joy. That's it. All these other things will not exist in heaven. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbid to shine. But God, who called me here below, will be forever mine. Now, you don't, you don't I shouldn't even have to read these scriptures. Okay? Acts 2.20 the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great notable day of the Lord to come. And it says, you know, the, the earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbid to shine. Okay, Revelation 21.1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Matching scripture. Let's keep going here. Okay. So that kind of wrapped up the this, this song in a sense. Uh, but as we see, this song has survived 240 some years because it matches scripture. I was uh, recently um, reminded of how some people um, think that, well, you know, this other Bible has more books in it, or this book that, and this book that. And it's like, there may be some books, and I have not yet uh, fully watched uh, the one video that was recently sent to me. But the, the guy starts out in that, why was it uh, removed from the Bible? Well, frankly, it was never in the Bible talking about this specific writing that was found and it's from a person mentioned in the Bible. Uh, I may dwell on that more at a later date because I've not watched the entire video. I started watching it this morning and got pulled in another direction. But immediately, I heard, I, this guy starts out, why was this, this book removed from the Bible? Well, it was never in the Bible to start with, Okay. And, and not only that, it's like, okay, let's just get these 66 books that are in the Bible, that are in the Holy Bible. Let's get those right before we worry about what is, what is and isn't in there. Now, I find it interesting, and I'm, I have no way, shape, or form or discouraging um, research. And, and But it's like research it with, what the, with what the Bible says in mind. Okay, uh, and make sure again what what I'm saying. We need to be extremely careful what we allow into uh, 
into our minds. Um, one of the songs, and I, I, I even pulled this out uh, nigh, over nine years ago when I initially put this together, and the same song came back to my mind this morning. Uh, there, is a, there was a song very popular back when I first gave my life to Christ that I absolutely I loved this song. I thought, wow, that's just so strong. And I thought it was spiritual. And in all reality, as much as I love the people that sang it, it's nothing against them, okay? And nothing against the song. It's an incredibly beautiful song. And I'm going to try to get my point across without giving up because I don't want to slander, think it leads you to think I'm slandering anyone or anything. But there's a song that talks about a mountain. And uh, not being able to climb that mountain. There's so much not scriptural about that. First of all, the Word of God says that God doesn't... He says we will have tribulation. It doesn't say He will give us tribulation. And so when this lyric said that God gave this mountain... No, he didn't. Number one. And number two, there's no need to climb it. Remember, Jesus said, I have overcame the world. But also, Scripture says in Mark eleven twenty three, For verily I say unto you, that whoever shall, shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. In other words, you speak to that mountain. You don't climb it. So there are many songs out there, Christian songs, that would be beautiful, and they might even do something to your, to your mind, so you think, and they might bring you to tears. But are they scriptural? What are they feeding you? This particular thing, it was feeding negativity. It was saying that God can't overcome. It was, it was, it was setting a, a thing in your mind to say that God will put things in front of you that you can't overcome. Now, what is that doing to your mind? And how does that match scripture? The point being here, okay, you need to watch what goes into your mind, whether it be from music or anything else. There's, pe there's people in the pulpit preaching mess that'll send you to hell. The ear gate. You need to be mindful of what you allow in. There's some stuff that's being said nowadays that you just need to straight up let go out the other ear. You say, How does that mass scripture? You know, 2 Timothy 2.15 says to study to show yourself approved. Do it. Just because some guy on TV that's got enough money to be on TV says it, that doesn't make it right. He might be on there. His money might be coming because he's preaching what itching ears want to hear. Oh, I'm okay. I thought, I thought scripture said this, but this guy's explained it where I'm okay. But they don't add that other part. This man's going to send me to a burning hell because he's telling me I'm okay and I'm not. I don't mind scripture. Stop doing that. Stop listening to this mess. And I'm telling you, be careful what you let in. I I get so frustrated. And right now, I'm just a little bit fired up. And it's, it's not me. It's the Spirit of God that's on me right now. If you allow any kind of mess into your... And it, it includes what comes out of here. Okay? I'm going to give you an up-close personal example. Pure stupidity on my part. Okay? 
And I, I, I know that this happened to help feed into today. And I know it happened to help teach me a lesson, remind me of a lesson I already knew. And that's this, this mouth gate. We need to be careful what comes out of it as well. I was sitting, sitting at the river one day this week and I was talking about backup cameras on vehicles. And I said, well, you know what? I don't really care whether I got it or don't. It doesn't really help me. It's more of a distraction to me. I said, you know, I'd rather just use the mirrors. And as long as I got my little, uh, on that big old truck that I drive, it has sensors, uh, that begin to beep when you get, when you're backing up and you get too close to something. So that's, that's good enough. I don't need that backup camera. And do you know what? Two days later, that backup camera went out. It come out of here. Sometimes when this stuff comes out of your mouth, you're not just saying, you're prophesying. You're speaking it out into the atmosphere and it could bring things to pass. And so you need to watch what comes out of here as well. But I'm telling you, it starts up here. It starts with these big old things sticking out on me. If I wiggle them, I might be able to fly. I need to watch what I, you know, I did, what, what comes in those. What I allow to come in and stay. I, you know, Joe Osteen, whether you like him, whether you don't, I don't care. It doesn't matter at this point. But he, he talked one time about this stuff gets in here and you know it doesn't. Delete. You got a little delete button on your computer. Okay, you use that delete button in your mind. Okay, delete. Yes, Gail, you're absolutely right. Your words are alive. They are living. They can bring things to pass. Speak, speak it. How did God create the earth? He spoke. You know, let's just go, go there real quick. I, I'm sorry, I'm on a roll. I, you know, God's on a roll. Forgive me, but. Had no idea Amazing Grace was going to lead to all this today. But, uh, you know, what, what, do, what do we see when we look at how God, how do we get here? And God said, verse 3, Genesis chapter 1, and God said, and, uh, and verse 5, and God called the light day in the darkness, okay? He called. Verse 6, and God said, Okay, verse 8, and God called. Verse 9, and God said. 10, and God, and God called. 11, and God said. This is creation we're talking about here. Okay, this is creation. We were made in God's image. <coughs> Excuse me. So if we were made in God's image and he spoke things into existence, he created with his voice, God said, don't you think we ought to be just a little bit careful about what comes out of our mouth? And don't you think maybe we ought to be a little bit careful what's planted in our mind? I'm telling you, if I go out here, if I see someone, they're planting a garden for me. And I see them plant tomato plants, I'm going to let them seeds grow. But if I see them planting ragweed next to it, I'm going to go out there and dig that stuff up and throw it away. It should be the same thing with your ears. There's some stuff come in your mind that are spoken that you just need to just delete and reject it. I mean, I don't care if you have to say out loud. I rebuke that. I've done it. I know some people may get offended, have gotten offended, that, but I don't care. I'm not going to let them speak trash in my life. You know, well, you, you know, you're just going to this or you just, no, I rebuke that. That's not what the Word of God says, so don't bring that trash to me because I'm not going to listen. And I'm telling you, it's the same way. Going back to the, the point, it's the same way with music. 
You need to be careful. I'm telling you, there are Christian songs that are just an absolute mess. That'll put false doctrine in your mind. So be careful what you listen to. I, I had gotten a little lax with this and I don't know what I may or may not listen to. Now, thank God I know some scripture. I don't know it all. I'm still a work in progress. But there are things. You know, one of my pet peeves, and I found out it was a good friend, a friend of ours, ministry friend of ours, and we love doing things with, what have you, uh, and supporting pet peeve of his, is I'm a sinner saved by grace. No, you're not. You might have been a sinner. I was, you know, I was just talking about this a couple of days ago. I, I, I can relate to the scripture when Paul said that he was the chief sinner. Now you look at that scripture. Paul didn't say I am. He said I was. I was a sinner, <coughs> but I am not a sinner saved by grace. I was. And there's a difference. Again, it's a it's a big, big, big difference of being was and am. You can't let that mess get in. You can't let the thought that you're a sinner get in your mind because you are re rejecting what Jesus did on the cross. If you continue to look at yourself as a sinner, you are rejecting Jesus' death and resurrection. Because he died that you don't ever have, you don't have to be considered a sinner. You are righteous through his blood. And for you to continue to say you say something different, you're rejecting that blood. And I'm sorry, I, you know, you can call it picky, you can call it worry, I don't care. You better listen. You don't want to die a sinner. I know, we all screw up, I get that. I do, I get that, I get that, you know, I just... I probably messed up today. It doesn't come to mind right now, but I probably have. If I didn't, I probably will. And I'm not speaking that again. I'm, 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 to see right there, I'm practicing, I'm practicing against what I just preached. I speak right now that I will not sin today. That's what I should be saying. You know, God says, be ye perfect, for I am perfect. And we need to look at ourselves as God looks at. God doesn't look at us as sinners. We're saints. We're perfect. And so why should I say I'm a sinner? I'll say I was. I'll say I might have been able to give Paul a run for his money. Because of doubt that I ever ever martyred any Christian, but I, I can promise you I persecuted some. I'm just telling you the truth. There was a day when I made fun of people that were serving God. I'll never forget as a young, uh, a young kid, uh, a Pentecostal costal church on the street in the town that I grew up on had their doors open in the summer. We'd buy, run by and yell things and, and try and disturbing their service and whatever. I mean, making pretty much making a mockery of God. I didn't know any better at the time. That's not an excuse. I'm just simply telling you, I, yeah, I'm just trying to be candid. I was a sinner. I'm not going to, many of you have heard my testimony and I'm not going to sit and whine and feel sorry for myself about what doctors have said. I'm going to tell you I'm healed. I'm healed by the blood of Jesus, and I'm going to claim it. You know, recently I, I was scheduled for three different operations, and I canceled all three of them because I'm standing on God's word. I'm not standing on what the doctor says. He can say whatever he wants. And I, again, 
the lead. Because the word of God says I'm healed. I stand on it and I believe it. And you should too. Whatever. It, it, you know, take everything and match it up to the word of God. Does this match the word of God? And if it doesn't, get rid of it. Don't receive it. Don't make it part of your doctrine. Don't make it part of your your life, everyday life. It's like a good example. You know, many of you, most of you know that a doctor told me many, many years ago that I had leukemia. And he said, expect 100% growth a year, which at that rate, I'd be dead. I would have been at 100% growth a year. I would have been dead a few years ago. That wasn't reality to me. And it still is not today. That is not my reality. My reality is right here. Right here. It's a holy Bible. That's my reality. And it says I'm healed. Okay? Yes, I like that. Pray that he removes the scales from your eyes. It shows you who you really are and what his word really says about you. You need to look at your, when you look yourself in the mirror and men when you shave or women when you're putting your makeup on or comb your hair, whatever. I don't have a lot of hair to comb, so. Uh, but you need to see what God sees. You need to see what matches this. Not what some doctor put in your head or what some some other human put in your head. Oh, you're ugly or oh, you'll never amount to anything or all this or well, whatever it is. No, 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 no. Delete. You need to make sure your life matches this. Nothing else. Not what the doctor says, not what, what, whatever, okay. It, it's not what your spouse may try to feed you, not what, what your sibling that doesn't like you, that's jealous of you, likes to feed you or your neighbor or anybody else. You're not what they say. Unless they are exercising Hebrews chapter 10 edifying and provoking to love, then yeah, you're okay. We're okay with that. But if anybody is speaking negativity, preacher, neighbor, relative, I don't care. If they're speaking negativity, you reject that much, that mess. Don't let that get into you. And when it, and when it comes to anything, if it doesn't match scripture, it's false. It's false information. And we cannot allow ourselves to continue to live by false information. I probably don't want to mention any specific news, uh, but you all get the point. There, I mean, you don't have to look too far. Just flip through some news channels and you'll find one that is absolutely, totally, unequivocally, politically based, preaching their beliefs and not the truth. They're not, they're not preaching news or not speaking news. They're speaking their beliefs and not all of it's going to be truth. There's, I mean, it's, it's politically based. There, I mean, if there's an honest policy, and I, maybe I shouldn't go there, but let let's just let me say that the political world today is nowhere close to biblically based. They, I mean, whether they're speaking truth or not. We're not called to bash each other. 
Tell me what you believe. What If you get in office, what are you going to do? Do you believe in this? Do you believe in that? I don't care what you, you know, if you want to speak negative, it just turns me off so much when they start speaking negative and bashing each other. Is that really what it's about? Well, what, what, what about what's your platform? Okay. Anyway, I don't mean to get on that, but, and I'm not, yes, I do have my own beliefs. And I try to make sure when I vote for someone, I try to make sure that they are as biblically based as possible. I'll just say that. Okay. But anyway, didn't mean to go down that path, but but back to my point. Make sure what you hear is not false doctrine. D just because you like a song, don't let it get into you. If it's not biblically based. Just because you think a a preacher's good looking, don't let him feed you a bunch of mess. Don't let him stand there just because you think he's cute and you're going to listen to his mess when he says, well, it's okay. You gave your life to Christ, so, you know, it's, he forgives you. It's like, does that mess scripture? The scripture tells me to repent. It doesn't tell me I'm... I can keep going because I confess Jesus and I can keep on with my sin. I'm okay. That's not what scripture says. It says to repent. Or someone says, you know, people, well, faith is all you need. We're not called to works. Yeah, we are. Don't misinterpret the book of James. If you love God like you, like you profess you love God, the works will follow. They're not a necessity. They're a desire. I don't, I don't come up here on Sunday mornings because it's a necessity. I'm here because it's a desire of my, I desire to serve my Lord and Savior. I don't have to do this. I don't. I could, I'll go to heaven. I, you know, if the Lord came back right now for me, I, I, I would go to heaven. Whether I ever preach another sermon or not. It's my desire to do this because I love the Lord that much. So there are works involved. After faith comes the works, I promise you. If you truly have faith and you truly love the Lord, there will be works. Whether that be just telling someone else about Christ or whether it be just simply not saying, whatever, works will come. Anyway, I, I've kept you long enough today. My Again, the point being, make sure it matches Scripture. Whether it be music, whether it be, you know, uh, books or sermons on with the TV evangelists or make sure it matches scripture. Amazing Grace did not survive two hundred and forty some years since it was first published, seventeen seventy nine. Let's do the math again, okay, twenty one and two hundred and then twenty two is two hundred and forty three years. Okay. I know I just gave you a little quick math lesson. Okay, but 243 years this song has survived. That's not an accident. It wouldn't survive. If it, if it had false doctrine in it, it would have been kicked to the curb a long time ago. But I can promise you, it's sung around the world, most likely daily, somewhere. Someone is singing Amazing Grace. Because it's real, it's truth. So just be sure what you allow in here and what comes out of here is just like the song Amazing Grace. It matches scripture. And I speak right now. I am healthy. I am wealthy. I am full to the brim with the Holy Spirit. 
I am able and I am willing because I am a child of God. I dare all of you to speak boldly the truth of the word about yourself. Get in there and see what the word says and then speak it. Speak it out loud. Put it out there. Just like that backup camera on my truck. Put it out there. Unfortunately, I, I had a rude reminder. I spoke it. And that broke it. <laughs> I speak it. But along those lines, speak it and believe it. You had to believe to start with. Speak it. And make sure it matches scripture. All right, that's, that's the whole point today. Be careful what you let in. Make sure it matches scripture. If you ever have any doubt, look it up. Give me a call. You know, we, I, I love getting, um, <clears throat> Facebook inboxes or I don't care emails if you got me email if you don't inbox me on Facebook I'll give you my email and I, I love getting number one testimonies um, love helping if, if I have to dig in uh, to the word of God to give you an answer does it match scripture uh, you know I'll do that I'm willing to do that and frankly I enjoy doing that but make sure from now on, you live according to the Word of God. Not according to your emotions. A song can be, can touch your emotions, but not be scriptural. Understand that. Like the example I gave you today. I love that song. It almost brought me to tears. But it's not, it was not matching scripture. It was putting false doctrine in my mind. So be careful. I'm going to close with that. Beware. We love you. You cannot do anything about it. We will be in Acts chapter 2 on Tuesday evenings with Rock Through the Scripture. Tamara, I believe, will be back Thursday at 7. And... Uh, for those of you that care to watch, I will be live tomorrow evening. Uh, I believe, I'm sure Tamara will post some link. I'll be part of a panel that I have uh, occasionally been on before with uh, uh, Bishop and Pastor Spalding. I believe he's from New Jersey. Uh, we will be on a live Zoom meeting. I'm sure we'll get that link out there. That, Starts at 6.30 tomorrow evening, if any of you choose to tune in. They do allow comments. Um, it's always a blessed time. And, and give God all the glory. So again, stay focused. Keep it real. Let it match scripture. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this time. We thank you for this word, Father. We thank you, Father God, that as we go forth from now, that we will always and forever match your word. That the way we live, our lives, will match Scripture. That our understanding of who we are will match Scripture. And that we can go forth boldly. Yes, we come to the throne boldly. But let us go into the world boldly as men and women and ch as children of God. Let us be on fire for you and let that overflow. Let that overflow into those that we be, that we will come in touch with in our daily walk, Father. Let our daily walk match your word. And may you get all the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' precious name. We love you. You cannot do anything about it. Until next time, stay blessed.